All right, good luck. Okay, thank you. Hello, hope you've enjoyed your day. You okay? All right? Okay, um, you want to know my life story? My name is Ryan, Ryan Lane. Um, I don't have a sign name, I just finger spell it. Um, I used to, my first sign name was this on the chest, but then a lot of people got, the, got it wrong, so I wanted somebody else. I wanted something to identify me um, with, so then I said, they said, tell me your full name, and I said, Ryan Lane. So I just say, Ryan, I finger spell it, I just <laughs> sign it out. Is that just Ryan Lane? Yes. How did I become deaf? I'm not really sure about how it became deaf, but my parents told me that I was born and then two weeks later the doctor needed to see me to uh, check out to see how I was doing. So I went over to see the doctor and they found out I was deaf and maybe I got it from my father because my father was hard of hearing uh, but my, and my mother was hearing. All of my family were hearing except my father was hard of hearing. My whole family really did not sign um, at all. Um, both. Both sisters know sign language, and that's it, you know. And you know, I was a little baby. I was the baby of the of the family. I went into mainstream schooling, and I transferred to a deaf school. It was called California School for the Deaf in River Riverside. Graduated in 2007. That's a lucky number. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> yeah, you too. All right. You graduated in 2007. Yeah. All right. Good for you. All right, I was thinking about um, to have a uh, major in welding um, and welding for the Navy or to repair uh, military cars or trucks or whatever. And I realized that, you know, film, I, there was a film bug following me and it bit me and I become an, it became an actor. It was just like Peter Parker, you know, <laughs> I'm the same way. I became the same as him. And how did I become an actor? Uh, back then, I didn't, I didn't uh, think about majoring in film, you know, I, I could ca copy anybody, whoever, whoever you are, I can co copy your actions, you know, because my family was hearing and I would watch them, you know, they wouldn't sign, I would copy their expressions, you know, if they're angry or sad or, you know, and I would follow whatever they would do and then I was, I, I was used to doing that. And my friends would say, I suggest you become an actor. And I said, no. And, and the reason why is because of all of the TV shows or, shows or movies. I didn't see any deaf actors. I only saw Marley Matlin. And I'm sure you already met Marley Matlin this past Monday. Did you see her? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Well, you know, that was one. That was a role model. That was it. So I just told them, no, you know, why, why should I become one? There's no deaf actors. You know, I'm not going to talk about myself like that. And David... Risotto, the director of uh, Dummy Hoy. Do you know the movie Dummy Hoy? Do you know who Dummy Hoy is? You know, I'm going to tell you. There's all the hearing people don't know about Dummy Hoy. He was a deaf professional baseball player. You, do you know who uh, the ref was? You know, you know how they sign out and you know and base and things like that. They didn't used to know how to sign, but you know they would you know speak saying ball out things like that. And, you know, so they stole his ideas, dummies ideas of, uh, you know, the different uh, signs. So they used to do the chant gestures in baseball from dummy. And uh, they, what they did is they visited me in high school and they said, come here. And I said, what? What's going on? And they looked at me, the director of the, of the movie, and I said, dummy boy, what, what does dummy boy mean? And he said, you look like him. Um, and do you know, at that time, you know, I didn't know anything about deaf culture because I grew up in a mainstream school and my mother and father didn't know anything about deaf, cult deaf culture at all. So, you know, I went to the deaf school and uh, there was an event, it was a, it's called Tournament Hoy. And I said, what does that mean, Tournament Hoy? It's with, you know, all the deaf, you know, schools when they come to one place, you know, and they compete. And Dummy Hoy invented that, where the different schools would come together and compete, and I was learning about that. So I said, I told the director, I know just a little bit about that. And the director said, okay, are you interested? Do you want to become an actor? You know, have you ever been involved in film before? And I said, ah, just to tell you, I have never been involved in film. I have not, never at all. And so I was thinking about it. I said, should I? Should I do that or not? And then my deaf friends saw this conversation between me and this director, and they said, yes, go, go, you know, do it. And, and I said, uh, you know, maybe I'll just try one film, that's it. And, and I told them yes. 
And at that time, I had a mohawk at the time. <laughs> And just for fun, you know, I was a senior, I was playing around and, you know, and then they called me to be in this film with a mohawk and they said, oh, okay, well, we'll try to play with your hair to see how we can make you look like an 80s haircut or something. <laughs> so, uh, so then uh, I went in, I said, what do I do? And they said, don't worry, we're going to give you the script, you know, don't worry about it. So, you know, I saw there was mostly action and I said, uh, were, they asked me, were you involved in uh, baseball? I said, yeah, wrestling. Uh, Football, you know, dirt bike, swimming, you know, different kinds of sports, snowboarding, paintball, you know, different sports. You could do it all. And, um, and then so they said perfect. And then, um, the, but the lines, you know, you know, using my emotions, crying and things like that, that's what it involved. And I said, what do, you, what do I do? What am I supposed to do? And do you know who uh, Dean, Deanna Bray, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? You know, she was in the TV show in CSI, uh, is that right, CSI? CSI, with the hearing dog helping to uh, support her. And well, she appeared there and I said, hi. She said, have you experienced anything about being an actor or whatever? And I said, no. So she was trying to help me out. And, um, and she said, okay, you're not bad. You know, and I didn't do a, a bad job and I got the idea. And I thought, you know, that was it. That, I was just gonna do that show and that was it, that movie. And um, it, it, you know, somebody asked me, "Are you going to be an actor? Are you interested in that?" And I was, um, you know, interested in becoming a welder. Um, but then uh, my mom told me, "You know, you have an audition." And at that time, I didn't know about what uh, audition. What does that mean? Audition. It means tryouts for a film. And I said, "Dummy Hoy." They said, "No, a different show." And I said, "What is it called?" They said, "Cold Case." Cold Case. And, um, you know, this is my mom talking to me. And I said, you know, a TV show? Like a, a, million, and pe a million people are going to watch me on this show? And I was like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't get the script yet until the last minute, about 11.30 p.m., I grabbed the script. It was so thick. You know, I was, you know, reading the pages. And I was supposed to be Andy. I was playing Andy, um, looking through the script. And, and I said, what am I to do? I waited, I got there, and then the next day, the director uh, said, have you read it yet? I said, oh no, I only got it like the last minute, just briefly, you know, and he gave me more time to study it for two days. So then I came back, and you know, the third day I was fine, I, I went through it, I studied it and everything, and then I acted that, I auditioned, and then they said I made it. And, um, and my mom told me, um, you, you have a table read. And I said, what does table read mean? I don't know what that means. It's a meeting for all of the actors to get together, to, to act, actors and actresses to sit down and go through their lines. And I said, I'm not an actor. You know, I don't know what that means. So I went there and I, I didn't know where that was. That was in um, LA, around that area. And it was, uh, all, it was all the cold case, cat, uh, cold case uh, cast sitting around. And there was uh, Michael, uh, Davis, I think. I, I'm not really sure the last name. There was a couple of people. I'm sorry about that. Forgive me, please, for that. Um, there was three people, uh, and uh, I was very nervous. But then um, the director not noticed that I was not very good at acting, so they wanted to, you know, teach me the the, the roles and and everything. And I said, "What does it mean, agent? He's here to help you to take care of your, you know, your film stuff." And I said, is that what I need? I said, they said, yes. And, you know, I started learning and lo learning more about the film business. And then, you know, I finally got in involved with Switched at Birth. And um, I was supposed to play the role of Emmett. <laughs> you know, I auditioned for Emmett. And that was the first time. Um, and I said, Switched at Birth, what is that? They said, it's a new show on ABC Family. And I said, oh, okay. Did it just start? And I said, yeah, it was, uh, there were some deaf actors and actresses there. And I... You know, and I, I did, you did an audition for Emmett. I looked at the script, and and uh, they realized it did not fit my personality. The, the role of my wife didn't fit me. So uh, the the woman who made the show, uh, Lindsay, um, she said I'll contact you later. And I said okay. And I said take your time, no problem. If I don't make it, I'm not involved in the show. You know, just, just, you know, tell them I broke my leg or something, you know, and that my recommendation is you to show your respect and manners to them. If, if, if you don't, you know, they're not going to be interested in you involving in, you know, being a part of the show. So be nice. So I was nice to them and uh, they, and they, I said, thank you for thinking of me and I took off. 
So, uh, you know, one year later, uh, I was included, uh, well, I was working at a restaurant, um, training to be a chef. Um, you know, I was cooking and things, and um, understand, my, my boss was not from here, he's from another country in Europe. He was from um, Mo Montego. <laughs> and uh, are you good? <laughs> Saying that to the interpreter, you know? And uh, so, you know, I said, do I have to take some sort of uh, program or class? And I said, oh, and he said, no, it's free. So I took advantage of that. So I started to, you know, learn, you know, the business, learning how to uh, cut things, start, start cleaning and then cooking and then, you know, try to work my way up. So then, you know, I realized, you know, if he kept me washing dishes for a year and then there was no communication, I tried to communicate with the boss. He spoke English, but, you know, I had to read his lips and I really didn't understand what he was saying. And the workers weren't from here, too. They were from... Um, Mexico or Guatemala or some other country and they spoke Spanish and I didn't understand I was the only deaf there so I tried to communicate and that was for a year and it was so frustrated I was so frustrated I had to get up at 4 30 in the morning for six days you know be there uh, because where I work was in Brentwood do you know where that is Brentwood do you have you heard of that city that's in uh, Beverly Hills um, it's right in that area, and to my house, it's about 45 minutes away, so I would have to wake up, go back and forth, you know, to and from work. And then they switched to birth, called me again for an audition, and I said, okay. So I showed up, and um, the director asked me if my family knows sign language, and I said, no. And they said, oh, okay. And I said, so? They said, thank you, I'll keep in contact with you. And I said, okay, so I work at the restaurant and everything, and my mom told me, that I got a, call, uh, got a call from them saying that you made it to be on the show. And I said, oh, really? So will I stay on the show or will it just be one time? And they said, I don't know, we'll see. So, you know, I sh you know, showed up, switched at birth, you know, took my time, you know, because Katie and Vanessa and, and Sean Birdie and Marley Matlin, all of us became huge stars un uh, until we become huge stars and famous. All of them were famous. And um, I noticed that, um, you know, they, you know, left me alone, you know, and then I showed up and they said, who are you? And I think I spelled my name, Ryan Lane. And um, there was a, a woman, her name was Katie, and she signed her name Kay on the, on the chin because she's sweet. And I got to know her too. I became very comfortable with her. They, we became friends. It was like more than, it was like I was more than welcome and I became, you know, approachable to the cast and it was very nice. It was very great cast. It was very, uh, I was very motivated to be a part of that, that cast. And, and then after that, I just made it. And, um, and they said the uh, Switch to Birth crew loved me. Um, that's what my mom, my mom asked me if I was a part of that. And so I told the restaurant um, that I was done you know, it's not going to work out. You know, there's no communication. How can I communicate with them? You know, they've been keeping me to, you know, wash dishes for a year. You know, I've been so frustrated. You know, so I said I was done with that. So I became, you know, a cast member, switched at birth. Right now, um, my agent is going to no negotiate um, next week for a contract. Um, and I'm hoping they say, okay, that means I'll stay on the show. Thank you. <laughs> So, does anybody have any questions? Okay, he just asked me the most embarrassing moment. Well, uh, let me think. Okay, on Twitch Zipper. You know, there's a, a storyline about my character track. You know, works out a little bit. And I don't know if you know Mar Marley Matlin's interpreter, Jack Johnson. He said, he said, are you on ABC Family? Forget it, man. And, and you know, I was supposed to have a towel on and everything. And I was like, man, I better work out. I'm going to be wearing this towel. That was pretty embarrassing to have to do that towel scene. Any other questions? Okay, do you have uh, any brothers and sisters? I have two sisters, and both of them no sign, although neither of them are deaf. They both live in Las Vegas. Uh, they both live with my mom, and I used to live with my mom too. 
in Santa Clarita Valley. And that's near Six Flags, and I lived there for a couple of years, and then I realized that it really wasn't working out, so then I moved back in with my mom, because you know the economy was bad, I couldn't really afford it, um, my budget and so forth, so with all my bills, so. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of seeing somebody, so maybe we're dating. Anyway. Oh, you're right. Okay. okay, I'll give you my phone number. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I'll yeah, catch you later. Uh, what's your favorite team? You know, your like sports, football, baseball. Um, probably hockey. Yeah, probably hockey. So uh, you support Chicago? No, 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 no. I was born in that area, Orange County. So since I've been a kid, I've been a fan. And as soon as I found out where they were from, I was even more excited. Uh, also, football fan, the Cowboys, of course. Until I found them from Texas, and I was like, oh, well, okay. Well, so right now I don't have any favorite football team. I'm just a Ducks fan. Died in the wool. Um, I have a question. Uh, do your parents watch you um, act and realize that you, they have to start to learn to communicate mm -hmm. with oh, them? Oh, no, that's a great question. Yes. You know, it's funny. My mom never really thought that I would be successful, and I, of course, I am. But I think, I mean, they always ask me if my parents learned to sign. And I say a little bit. And then when I moved in with my mom, my mom was like, shoot, I better learn how to sign. So she just started three months ago. She's learning now. So that's good, right? All right. Yeah, it's good. All right. Well, I just wanted to let you know, you can go ahead and stand up and speak. You don't have to sign. You know, if you have any questions, anywhere in the audience. I have always actually wanted to be to Go ahead. I've always wanted to um, work in acting, preferably in the film industry and TV and stuff. What um, do you suggest to start off with finding an audition and stuff? How to start out? Well, uh, my agent is looking for more parts for me, but it's really difficult for a deaf actor because there's not really a lot of parts out there. Uh, you know, it's just... The, the thing is, she, she wants to know, like, best tips for auditions. Well, my best tip is be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. Just be yourself. <laughs> just show them who you are. That's kind of what I did with Switched at Birth. I was just myself. I just tried to be honest and show them who I was. So that's my advice. You know, you can't be somebody you're not. So don't do it. Be yourself and let them see who you are. How do you okay. find out like, when the auditions are? Where? Okay. For Dummy Hoy, they happened to visit my high school. Yeah, and they thought I looked like Dummy Hoy. For Cold Case, the agent called my high school to see if there were any deaf students who were interested in film. And they knew that I had been in one already. So the cold case, that kind of led to House. You know Dr. House? You know the doctor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's how they found me, through cold case. So it was really pure luck. Just things kind of happened randomly. Uh, and then from House, that's when uh, Switch at Birth sort of caught on that I had been in a few shows already, so they called me. 